Thank you for being here tonight. Welcome. You can all be seated. Thank you. Uh, we're glad you're here on behalf of Faith Baptist Bible College and the music department. I'd like to welcome you tonight. We'll try to take care of all our business here at the beginning so that we can just uh, move along, get through the concert in an orderly fashion here tonight. Uh, first of all, it's a great idea to silence your cell phones. College students, just throw them away. You won't, you won't need them tonight. And also silence your children. No, I'm just kidding. I have a few over here. I have a six-month-old daughter over here. She might make some noise. Uh, that'd be all right. Uh, you, hopefully you got a program. Uh, you may not be able to see it now, but you can take it with you. On the back of that program, there is a QR code. We like to welcome our friends of music, and that's a, a program where you can help us uh, by praying for us, supporting us. If you sign up, we'll get you a quarterly newsletter uh, that just kind of lets you know what's going on with our music programs. So uh, take advantage of that opportunity and just get on our mailing list if you would like some more email. That would be great. And then uh, we will have ushers at the door on the way out, and they, you know, they don't let you out unless you put something in the plate. I'm kidding about that part, too, but you're welcome to. Uh, as you'll see tonight, we'll have a few dark spots. Our offerings are going to help us upgrade our lighting system in here, uh, which is desperately needed. And so uh, if, you are, if the Lord prompts you and you, you feel compelled to give, please do so. Otherwise, we're glad you're here to enjoy tonight. Uh, there will be a couple of opportunities for you to sing along. I will turn around. You'll see this side of me again. And there'll be texts on the screen for you to follow along. That's towards the end. Uh, you'll get a chance to sing with us. And tonight we're going to start off, if you saw the program, we're going to start off a little bit on the lighter side. We're going to sing a couple of just uh, traditional Christmas songs that aren't necessarily part of our normal uh, story of Christ's birth, but they're just Christmas songs. So hopefully you'll enjoy those as we get started, and then we will uh, continue on into our program. Let's pray together as we begin tonight. Father, we thank you for the evening. Thank you for the opportunity we have to be here together. Thank you for the Christmas season. We thank you for your son, for sending him to die for us. And as we celebrate that here tonight, we ask that you would be honored and glorified in what we do. We ask that you would uh, speak to those hearts tonight who need to be encouraged, who need to hear of the Savior. We just ask for you to work amongst us tonight. We thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for all these musicians who give of their time to uh, work hard and to do these concerts. We just ask that you would bless them, give them strength tonight as, as we uh, play and sing to honor you. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in the heavens and in the earth, things visible and things invisible. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I come from Very good. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to take care of it, and God commanded the man, saying, you may freely eat of any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For if you do, you will surely die. Now the serpent was more cunning than any other animal that God had made. He asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, lest you die. The serpent said, you won't die. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, 
and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it, and then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. Therefore, sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin. And so death passed to everyone, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, 
and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his father David for all eternity. Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. But when Mary saw the angel, she was confused because she did not understand what the angel meant. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end.
years old, most highly favored lady. How Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiance, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As she considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to her, appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. A decree was issued by Caesar Augustus, that a census be taken for the entire Roman world. Everyone returned to his own city to be counted. Because Joseph was a descendant of the house of David, he traveled along with his fiancee Mary from Galilee to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Mary gave birth to her first child a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
And so the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That same night, in the fields nearby, there were shepherds watching over their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. Today, in Bethlehem, the city of David, a Savior has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Shall 
about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed. The shepherds returned to their fields, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as the angel had told them.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, during the reign of King Herod, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who is to be born King of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and asked them for the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and carefully search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may also go and worship him. After meeting with the king, the wise men continued their journey, and they followed the star they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. and dwelt among us. He came into the very world he had created, 
but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of the Father's one and only Son. Oh. 
Well, that was excellent. Uh, we haven't seen it this packed in a long time. It's great to have all of you here tonight. You know, college would be a wonderful thing if you didn't have to take any tests. And uh, they have just finished. This is their last full week of classes. Next week is uh, finals week. And when you think about a test, uh, at least here at the college, it has to be done in a certain amount of time. Uh, if you don't have the answers done when the time is up, then you have to turn in the test as it is. You also have to have the right answer. Uh, if you get the wrong answer, you're not going to pass the test. You know, really, there's one test in life that has far greater consequences than an A to an F, and it's about your soul. And if we ask you tonight, do you know for sure if you were to die, you'd go to heaven? There's only one right answer to that, but you have a certain amount of time to get that answer right. For some of you, it'll be longer. For some of you, it'll be shorter. But by the time you die, you have to have the right answer. If I asked you tonight, how many of you know how to get to 51128 Rural Route 2, Crookston, Minnesota? Anyone know how to do that without looking on your phone tonight? By the way, that's where I grew up. And if you said, hey, that's where I'm going to go. I said, really, how are you going to get there? Well, I'm going to just try and make more right turns than wrong turns. You're never going to get there. So I, I'm just somehow going to do it. It's just going to happen. I'm not going to look at a map. I'm not going to get any directions. Okay, you're a guy. We get that. But uh, no, somehow I'm just going to get there. We'd say, well, I, I don't think you're going to get there. We all understand that if you're going to get to 51128 Rural Route 2, Crooks in Minnesota, you're going to have to get some directions and you're going to have to follow them. And if you said tonight, I want to go to heaven, but you've never read the Bible, you've never looked at the directions, but somehow you think you're going to wake up there, it's not going to happen. You're going to have the wrong answer. And if you say, well, my good works will outweigh my bad works. Well, yeah, but the first wrong thing you do makes everything wrong. Just like one wrong turn, you can make all the right ones after that, but you're not going to get there because you made a wrong turn. And maybe you say, well, I'll just let it get all sorted out at the end. Okay, I challenge you tonight, it's not about an A to an F. It's about the destiny of your soul. Maybe you're tonight think, well, I go to church. Well, you know, the Bible says that going to church isn't enough. There's only one right answer. You heard Dr. Mark and you heard all of the students walk us through. We come to Christmas to celebrate the only person who came in this life, lived and died, who never sinned. His name is Jesus Christ. And we celebrate that. And you say, well, how do you know that the Bible's right? Well, primarily from all the prophecies in the Old Testament, if you know your Bible, there's an Old Testament and a New Testament mathematically impossible that all those prophecies in the Old Testament would be fulfilled by Jesus Christ. You heard one of them tonight. The wise men show up and say, where is he going to be born? Well, they could go to the Old Testament and say, well, if he's the savior of the world, he's, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. And of course he was. I don't have time tonight to walk through all those prophecies, but I would just challenge you, there's too many of them for the Bible not to be true. There's nothing that said about one person. These are all the things that are going to happen, and they were all fulfilled. No one's that lucky. It's mathematically impossible. I would challenge you tonight, the Bible has to be true. And so if you're here tonight and say, hey, I want to go to heaven when I die. Have you ever read the directions? Have you ever let someone take a Bible and show you from a Bible how you can know for sure going to heaven? In a nutshell, the Bible says there's three things you have to do. Number one, you have to admit you're not perfect. Most people I talk to have no problem admitting that. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know why we don't all automatically get to go to heaven? Because we're sinners. And then you have to believe that Jesus died on a cross and rose again, what we celebrate at Easter time. That one person who lived without sin died on a cross to pay for your sin and my sin. Not because we asked him to, but because he loved you. You know, this time of year, there's a lot of hopeless people. You know what? Jesus Christ gives you hope tonight. He gives you hope in your marriage. Maybe you came tonight and you feel, man, my marriage is hopeless. No, it's not. 
not with God's help. I said, man, I, I don't know where I'm going to go when I die. Well, you could if you let someone take a Bible and show you. So number one, you have to admit you're a sinner and that you're sorry. If you're here tonight, say, hey, I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to do whatever I want. You can do that, but you're going to have the wrong answer. Let Jesus Christ pay for your sins tonight. If you come and say, hey, I know I'm a sinner and I'm sorry. I believe Jesus died and rose again. And I'm ready to commit my life to him. I want to be a Christian. I want to do what God wants me to do. The Bible says, then he can guarantee that you have the right answer and you will go to heaven. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior tonight? Are you celebrating what the whole point of Christmas is about? That's why it means so much to all of us, all the people on this stage. We know Jesus Christ is our Savior. And we're so thrilled to celebrate that birth. It's more than a Christmas tree to us. This season is about celebrating our Savior and all that he did for us and the love that he has for us. And if you've never read a Bible, probably the one verse you know tonight is John 3.16. You see that at all the football games. You've seen that reference a hundred times. You know what that reference says? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, so God so loved you, that he gave his only begotten Son, sending Jesus Christ at Christmas time, that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we are here tonight to just say, hey, we love you, we love our community. Uh, at least for me, this is kind of the start, the kickoff to the Christmas season. I'm one of those Scrooges. You cannot listen to Christmas music before Thanksgiving. And uh, you cannot open a present early. That is a, that is a terrible crime. And, uh, and so this, to me, is always a wonderful start. And I appreciate the wonderful job that our students did. And uh, so we would just ask you tonight, as you leave tonight, as you uh, celebrate your Christmas season in your way and in your family. By the way, wasn't it great to sing carols together tonight? Uh, that was really special. And uh, however you celebrate it, I hope you're also celebrating the reason for the season, which is Jesus Christ. And if you say, boy, I, I want to go to heaven, I hope I'm going to heaven, the Bible was written so that you can know for sure. Have you ever had someone take a Bible and show you from a Bible? Being a Baptist will not get you into heaven, but neither will being a Catholic or a Lutheran or any other religion. It requires a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you don't have one tonight or you're not sure, it's still a personal choice. We'd love to just give you the information. You know, the one thing at a college is teachers love to teach. If you have a good teacher, what do they love to do? They love to teach. And if you're here tonight, and they love to give you information. You know, most teachers want you to pass the test. <laughs> Students don't always believe that, but it's true. They want them to pass the test. And I would just say we're here tonight wanting you to pass the test. We want to be in heaven together. Wouldn't it be great if this same crowd was all in heaven together someday? Wouldn't that be pretty cool? It could happen, but it's your choice. And so let me encourage you, take the time. We're all busy, but it's the most important decision you'll ever make. It's the most important test you'll ever make. And you only have this lifetime to make, get the right choice. So uh, please take that time. I want to just thank a few people. We'll have uh, Sherry come up. We'd like to thank Sherry. Let's give her a round of applause for the great job she did. And I have so enjoyed Dr. Ellis. He just does such an incredible job with everything that he's ever done. And I just so appreciate Dr. Ellis. Dr. Ellis, if you'd come, let's give him a hand. <laughs> and I think I saw a slide we were not supposed to see. I think it said the Hallelujah Chorus. But how many of you would like an encore tonight?
I'm tired. <laughs> and that's all the music we have. Have a Merry Christmas. Thank you for being here tonight. You are dismissed. <laughs>